Africa Prime, brought to you by Jamison Select Reserve. Welcome to this special edition of uh, Africa Prime, where tonight we're joined by His Excellency President John Arthur Mills of Ghana. And we're going to be delving into the economic story that is Ghana today and where Ghana is heading in the years ahead. We'll also be talking about the story behind the man. Mr. President, thank you and welcome. Thank you. Let's first begin by talking about the story that everybody is talking about. When Africa talks about, uh, in fact, when the world talks about seven of the ten fastest growing economies in the world, Ghana is mentioned in there. Where is that growth? Well, let me say that um, Ghana has been lucky because um, over the years we've attempted to lay a solid foundation for rapid economic growth. I believe that now we are at the takeoff stage, and I'm not surprised that the economy is growing so fast. When we came into office in January 2009, our vision, which we are still pursuing vigorously, was to invest in our people, to produce the right kind of infrastructure to support a strong economy, and also to run an open and transparent government. Uh, these are the main pillars that support our vision, and we've been working very, very hard at them. We are, as a government, creating the enabling atmosphere to allow investors to come in. And luckily, we have discovered oil and gas, which has added extra impetus you know, to the attraction that people have for investing in Ghana. Yeah. The cynics will say, uh, you know, when you talk about Ghana today, you ought to talk about oil because oil is the big differentiator. But beyond oil, Ghana is a much bigger economy than that. Well, Ghana existed before the oil. Let's talk about where those opportunities are. Where yeah. are they? Because, look, in agriculture, for, for a long, long time, we were the go go worst leading producer of cocoa. Now, even, we are second, but we are still producing a lot of cocoa. Agriculture has really taken off. Gold. Ghana used to be called Gold Coast. So the mineral or the mining sector is still very vibrant. Now when it comes to education, I think Ghana is known for the quality of its human resources, from the medical field. So all along, where you have an educated people, it is easy because that's the important foundation for economic growth. But let's pause there, Mr. President, and touch on the two sectors that you've just spoken about, cocoa and gold. What measures are you putting in place to ensure that you return to the top? Because Ivory Coast is now bigger than you. Never mind the, stri the, 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 the strife that is in that country lately. What measures are you putting in place to get invested in new money coming into those two sectors? You know, our cocoa industry went down some time ago for a number of reasons. This is not to take anything away from uh, Cote d'Ivoire. Sure. But we are taking positive steps. For example, we are encouraging the cocoa farmers you know, to uh, grow more. We are giving them the inputs with fertilizer, with you know, uh, weedy sites. And above all, we are giving them a good price for their cocoa, which is a very big incentive. So we see that the cocoa industry is beginning to, to flourish. And very soon, we are going to give Ivory Coast a run for their money. When will that be? Well, very soon. When are you going to be number one again? Oh, let me say, in a few years' time, few we're years going time. to catch up with uh, the COVID world. And in gold? In gold, you know, gold is uh, a diminishing asset. And um, we have been mining gold over the years. Let me just say that sometimes uh, we think that we need to sit back and also look at the gold industry yeah. uh, because being a wasting asset, we ask ourselves, are we getting the best out of the uh, gold resources that we have sure. in our, our dear nation? Mm -hmm. But let me say that we are not going to concentrate you know, solely on gold. You know, gold will be the extra boost, but agriculture, education, these are what we need to concentrate on. Let's talk about the difference that oil is going to make and is making the Ghanaian economy. How much a difference do you think it will make? At the moment, it's not making much of a difference, except that it gives us hope for the future. Okay. But I do not want Ghanaians to think that the oil discovery is the end of everything. Mm -hmm. That is the end of the journey. 
If anything, it's the beginning of the journey. We want to make sure that we derive the maximum benefit from the oil. But that should not take away attention from the other very important areas, agriculture. No nation can flourish without a strong agricultural base. Sure. So the oil at the moment, you know, is just, you know, trickling in. I believe that would, in years to come, the oil will play quite a sizable role, you know. In What's the that sizable role? That's the number that I was looking for. Well, at the moment, you know, we are producing about 110,000 barrels a day. And who knows, in two, three years, um, it's certainly going to go up. But I cannot tell you exactly uh, how many thousands of barrels a day that we'll be able to uh, produce. Yeah. Now, we saw from the first quarter, growth quarter on quarter slowed in the first quarter of the year. But compared with the previous quarter, the, 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 in the, the previous year, we're looking at growth of 23%. For the rest of the year, what kind of growth are you looking for for 2011 for Ghana? Well, anything in the teens should be okay for us. 14%, 15% should be all right for us. But, you know, it's good to talk about the economic growth. But sure. sometimes you also want to make sure that it translates, you know, into some practical measures. And we want to create jobs for our people. We are happy that the economy is expanded because when it expands, it means that more opportunities are being created. And we hope, therefore, that with the phenomenal growth in the economy, we begin to see more jobs being created, more capital being injected into our economy, yeah. and more welfare or social interventions yeah. for our people. When you talk about employment, of course, you talk about a big problem across the whole African continent. We know that jobs are scarce in Africa. Let's talk about what you are doing in Ghana as part of your drive to try and create jobs for Ghanaians. What practical steps are you taking to increase job creation? In the first place, one must think about education, because whatever job you create, the people must have the necessary skill. So we are going very much into education, as we've done over the years. Now we are also encouraging our people to take to ICT. You'll find that in those countries where the emphasis has been placed on ICT, this sector alone creates a number of jobs. One area where I believe that we can create a number of jobs is agriculture. Apart from the raw agriculture in quotes, agro-processing, food processing, these are all areas where we believe that we can create jobs. And when it comes to infrastructural development, road construction, houses, we should be able to create more jobs. And of course, business, business, we can also uh, be able to create more jobs for our people. Yeah. So it's a really a mixed bag. But the important thing is that people must have confidence in the economy and be willing to invest so that they will then be able to create jobs, confident that well, when we create jobs, we'll get a good return on our investment. Yeah, yeah. Now, you live next, of course, to Africa's giant Nigeria, and uh, I had the privilege of listening to the new finance minister talking about their plans uh, to, uh, create, to, to, to uh, increase jobs as well as uh, increase investment in Nigeria. How do you differentiate yourself and make sure people don't forget about Ghana in the shadow of this big uh, neighbor of yours called Nigeria? Well, we are acknowledging the size and power of Nigeria, but I want to assure you that there's room for both of us. And therefore, you know, the investments we flow into Ghana as well as into Nigeria, it depends on the kind of enabling atmosphere that you have mm -hmm. and the kind of foundation that you lay yeah. and the kind of infrastructure support that you provide. Yeah. And we are bent on providing these. If Nigeria provides these as well, what it means is that capital will flow from other places now into Africa. And this is the kind of development that we want to encourage. Yeah, we speak, of course, of a rivalry between Ghana and Nigeria, but in reality, we need each other because the figures show that Africans are not trading amongst themselves. If you look at the figures that come from the world, for instance, they show uh, intra-African trade is below 10%, whereas in other parts of the world, it's a much, much larger figure. Well, are the regional structures that we have now sufficient to encourage intra-African trade? Well, some are working. I think you can cite SADC, SADC, one of them. ECOWAS is also trying, but clearly, there's more that we need to do. Inter-African trade has to be encouraged. It's a pity that we don't seem to have too much confidence in ourselves. We're always looking outwards. Why we should look inward? Yeah. Yeah. Because we have all kinds of resources. Yeah. And with the right combination, you know, we should be able to derive the maximum advantage 
from what we have. And my visit, you know, visits, going to see what exists elsewhere, yeah. having the investment and in business for uh, are ways of encouraging Africans, you know, to trade among themselves. Yeah. Sometimes the problem is the inability of our people to move freely across borders mm -hmm. and also to move their goods and products across borders. Yeah. We have all kinds of restrictions. It's tough to get across yes, the border in Africa. We are attempting to remove these because even in Europe, you know, there's free movement. Sure. Why should we not do so? Of course, there's a legacy, I would say, from the colonial masters yeah. where there were these the strict borders, even where you had families you know, divided by artificial lines, getting from one side to the other. was a problem. How much more goods and then is, others? Is ECOWAS then working as well as it should? It is working reasonably well. Let me say that uh, the level of awareness of the need for us to work even more, you know, has gone up. And we are realizing as the competition for scarce resources, capital in the world, you know, heats up that there is a need for us to tighten our belt to see how we can encourage yeah. free movement of goods and persons. Yeah. Because we have the skill, the market is there. So let's look at what we can produce yeah. and what we can do for one another. Yeah. Oh, you are here, of course, to try and encourage trade between Ghana and South Africa. What sort of interest did you find and what sort of companies do you see looking to Ghana? We know there are 80 that are already there. I must say that I've been impressed by the response that I've had so far because quite a number of South African businesses um, or investors want to invest in Ghana. And as you rightly pointed out, quite a number of them you know, have invested in Ghana. And they can tell the economic story of Ghana better than I can <laughs> because they are the major <laughs> players. Sure. But I believe that we've done what it takes yeah. you know, to encourage them. And you find South African investors in all areas. Africa. When everybody talks about Africa these days, they speak about Africa being the next investment destination, the next biggest thing to happen, the, 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 the new frontier. Are we sufficiently prepared to take advantage of the opportunity that has been brought to us as Africans now? I think so, we are. Do we have the structures though? Because now, if I look, I mean, when people talked about Africa and the African Union, they spoke about uh, the great vision that the brother leader in Libya had for Africa. Now, the brother leader may no longer be there. Do we have the vision and do we have the leaders to drive forward policies that will drive investment into Africa? Well, unfortunately, Africa is not selling itself as well as it should. For sure. But when you go around the various African countries, you will see for yourself what we've been able to do yeah. for ourselves. So the, the, there's a need for us, you know, to have confidence in our own ability, sure. you know, to go uh, the extra mile. Mm -hmm. And so I think that we've got the structure, but there is no society which will say we've got all the structure. Yeah, but some will say the Air African Union is not working as well as it should. It is. I mean, the, those who make, you know, this kind of argument are the ones who have not really followed the operations of the AU with the keenness, you know, of interest. If people think that AU can get up and say, all African countries do this, they forget that, you see, we are running democracies. In whatever the AU decides, we have to get approval from our cabinet, from the, from the legislature. So it's not that easy. But I was saying that these institutions understand the need for us you know, to work together. So Africa is making an effort. And the AU has taken a number of initiatives AU is funding projects, AU is opening doors, so are the regional groupings. They are making uh, investment available, they are selling their various regions. And the leaders themselves, you know, have recognized the need for, to come together, sell their countries, and realize also that in the unity yeah. lies strength. True. But some will say that until we have a stronger voice at international institutions such as the World Bank, such as the International Monetary Fund, such as the United Nations itself, and fora such as the G8, now the expanded G20, will not make a difference. What can we do to make sure that our voice is ahead in those institutions? People tend to forget that we have come a long way. There was a time when nobody wanted to listen to Africa. Now people are beginning to listen to our voices. We are making progress. Don't we need more African states in the G20? Well, 
I think that it's a question of taking the steps at a time, one step at a time. You can't just rush into it because there are obligations. Sure. When you go to G, 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 G8, you are dealing with the big guns. And we don't have the artillery. So we have, yes, we have to ensure that, you know, when we pick up a fight, sure. you know, we can win it. So we are going step by step in accordance with our strength. And I believe that the world is beginning to look at the Africa, which is an emerging giant. Mr. President, we'll continue that conversation and we want to talk about specifically about you and where you've come from and how far you have come. You're watching Africa Prime. In this special edition, we're speaking to President John Artamils of Ghana. Join us after the break.